What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Let's find the values of x for which x is equal to the square root of 27 all over x. Our first step is not to cross multiply both sides because of this square root. So we're going to get rid of this square root first before we can cross multiply. So let's take the square of both sides in order to get rid of this square root. So I'll square both sides. The left is x. I'm going to square the left hand side. This is equal to the right hand side. We have the square root of 27 over x. I'm also going to square the right hand side. Now notice that this square cancels out the square root. So that we have x squared to be equal to 27 all over x. Now notice that we no longer have the square root there. But there is something we need to understand. That whenever we are getting rid of square roots by taking the square of both sides, we must check our final solutions to see if it is correct. Now we can cross multiply. So cross multiply. x squared times x is x cubed. And this is equal to 27 times 1, there is an invisible one here, is 27. Well, in order to get the values of x, there are two approaches to this. Let's say we have two sets of students. The first set of students, we see a cube here. And know that in order to eliminate the cube, we have to take the cube root of both sides. So what do they do? They took the cube root of the left hand side and they also took the cube root of the right hand side knowing that the cube root can cancel out the cube leaving behind x to be equal to the cube root of 27 is 3. But what do you notice? You notice that we only have one solution for x instead of three solution because this is a three degree equation. Although this approach is not wrong, but you miss out in other two solutions. Now, in order to get those other two solutions of x, we have to apply the algebraic method. Knowing that this x here is a perfect cube, 27 is also a perfect cube. You know what the other set of students would do? They will move 27 to the left hand side so that they have x cube already on the left. And as 27 crosses to the left, it becomes negative 27, leaving behind 0 on the right hand side. So this is x cubed minus 27 can be written as 3 cubed, and this is equal to 0. But notice that we have difference of 2 cubes on the left hand side. Well, there is a property for difference of two cubes, which is, for example, when I have a cube minus b cube, this can be written as a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. Now, if we have to compare what we have here and what we have here, you notice that our a is this x here, and our b is this 3 here. Now let's write this expression in this form. We have a minus b, which is going to be x minus 3, times we have a squared, which is going to be x squared, plus a times b, so plus a times b, x times 3, that is 3x, and then plus b squared, which is 3 squared, which gives 9. And this is equal to 0. So we have two cases here. We have x minus 3 to be equal to 0. Or we have x squared plus 3x plus 9 to be equal to 0. Now for the first case, it is easy for us to get a value for x. So x will be equal to when I move negative 3 to the right, it becomes positive 3. So we see here that we have this solution, x equal to 3, which is equal to the first method that our first student used. 
Now, to get other solutions of x, this brings our mind to our second case. This is a quadratic equation, but this quadratic equation cannot be factorized, so we have to use a quadratic formula. On the quadratic formula, our a is the coefficient of x squared, and that is 1. Our b is the coefficient of x, and that is 3. And our c is a constant term, which is 9. Now, the quadratic formula looks like this. x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, let's substitute the values for a, b, and c here. So, we have x to be equal to minus b, b is 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 3 squared, minus 4 times a times c. So, 4 times a, a is 1, times c, c is 9, all over 2 times a, that is 2 times 1. So this simplifies into x equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared, that is 9, minus 4 times 1 times 9 is 36, all over 2 times 1 is 2. Now, simplifying further, we notice that x will be negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 36 is actually negative 27 all over 2. Now, our next step will be for us to simplify this negative 27 here. So, we have x to be equal to negative 3 plus or minus. Now, simplifying this negative 27, one of the factors must be a perfect square. And that is 9. 9 is a perfect square. So, 9 times 3 gives 27 but in order to get this negative i multiplied by negative 1 all over 2 now let's split what we have inside of this square root so we have x to be negative 3 plus or minus this will be the square root of 9 times this will be the square root of 3 they are all inside of a square root times this will be the square root of negative 1 all over the denominator which is 2 actually the square root of 9 is 3 while the square root of negative 1 gives a complex value of iota now let's multiply all through so we have x to be equal to this is negative 3 plus or minus now 3 times the square root of 3 times i gives 3 root 3i all over 2. We can decide to separate the values. So we have x. Well, this is the fraction. Let's separate the fraction. We have negative 3 over 2 plus or minus 3 root 3i all over 2. So there are actually two values of x from here. So the values of x separately can be written as x equal to negative 3 over 2. Now go with a plus, plus 3 root 3i all over 2. Or the other value, x is equal to negative 3 over 2. Now this time go with a negative, minus 3 root 3i all over 2. So in all, we have two complex solutions and we have one real solution for x which is equal to 3. Now let's check for our real solution. So let's check. Our given question is x equal to the square root of 27 over x. That means wherever I see x, I'm going to be placing 3. So x is 3. That is what I have on the left to be equal to the square root of 27 all over 3, which is x. So this gives 3 equal to the square root of 27 divided by 3 is 9. So that's 3 
becomes the square root of 9 is 3. So we have the left hand side to be equal to the right hand side. So this is a correct solution for x. You can go ahead and check for the two complex solutions of x to see if we are also correct. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.